Welcome back to Open Relationships Transforming Together. I'm your host, Andrea Miller, and we are doing something really cool and really different today because tomorrow is Valentine's. So I am so excited after telling you so much about my husband, Sanjay, my hot hubby. He is my guest today, Sanjay, and we're doing something really special. We're reading together and answering 31 relationship questions, and neither of us have seen them. We know that this is going to be a little scary. We're going to be a little vulnerable, but in honor of the whole point of the show to open up to each other and to show what it's like to open up, to feel that kind of, oh, I, you know, uh, I, I, I'm out of my comfort zone a little bit, but but that's how we transform together. And so, Sanjay, are you ready? Ready as I would ever be. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to, you want to like uh, change your mind? I know. <laughs> Pull the I'm plug. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, good. And by the way, I should also add, Sanjay and I have been together for, can you believe it? How many years have we been together? Let's see if you can remember. Well, it's about 20, getting to be 26 years now. Oh, I was going to say 25. Okay. Yeah. But it's oh, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's right. about 26. 26 years. Married for almost 16. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, I, I mean, what I'm glad to say, it's starting again, because it's, but like I think it's, getting, it's better. getting better. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to answer. And then you're going to ask me the same question and I'm going to try to answer. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let's do. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, oh, and if I start to cry, just, you know, give me a little grace. Okay. What is the first thing you noticed about me when we met that made me, that made you want to get to know me better? First thing you noticed about me that made you want to get to know me better? Well, I think it was your presence and what you said to me that you actually wanted to travel half a world away to be in India doing this crazy project that, that, that you wanted to sign up for. So I was struck by, of course, you know, I couldn't help but noticing you as a person, but I think it was also the fact that you were so adventurous when you talked about some of the things you'd been doing semester at sea and, you know, roaming the world by yourself. Uh, that was striking and that was uh, attractive. Okay, um, do you wanna ask me? What is the first thing you noticed about me when we met that made you want to get to know me better? For me, it was love at first sight. It was game over. And you know this, but um, it's fun to share. We, um, I'd heard about you. I'd heard about you, this crazy, brilliant, overeducated guy. And that I remember, I can always like in my mind's eye, crystal clear that first day when I walked into your office, we were obviously working together. And I, you're right, I'd asked to be on the India team, the group you were leading because I was passionate about India. And so I remember walking in and thinking, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> but I was such a good girl and such a professional. I'm like, I got to keep it cool. And, you know, of course, the rest is history. All right, my turn. What funny warning would you give yourself about me if you could go back in time? What forewarning? What funny oh, warning? Oh, funny, uh, funny warning. I think a funny warning would be, I mean, if I'm, if I'm taking the question literally, is you, you delight, you're a serious guy, but you are, you're, you're easy to have fun with and to be silly with and literally tickle and you wriggle all <laughs> over the place. So I think that probably the funny- You should and, probably not share it with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> funny and wise warning, would be to um, to take better advantage of how funny and silly you are. And a funny a funny warning. Not have to ask. I you. Um, I don't remember the question. Oh, okay. Get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I would say I don't know whether it's funny or is it's a warning. I would say um, what's always struck me about you is your ability to remember things. That oh. I have I have <laughs> I have forgotten. I forgot, and I, that could be dangerous. I and I've heard that that could be weaponized. <laughs> and, 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 and I think, and I think, you know, it, it's commonly said about 
Uh, about women that they say, tend to remember the details and the guys don't. Mm -hmm. But I think I've I've, I've always I've always uh, uh, it's always struck me about you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel you know, I wish you would forget it, <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't quite happen. Yeah. Okay, that's so funny. All right, next. What were some things we used to do before we were married that you miss now? Travel. We used to travel a lot, and and. Uh, given the fact that we were um, working internationally, mm -hmm. uh, we used to be able to take time off to make mm -hmm. you know trips, uh, which became a lot more difficult mm -hmm. um, when obviously after after marriage we uh, you know we uh, we had kids, and also you started uh, mm -hmm. my, my a business mm -hmm. as a as as a couple. Now it takes a little bit more planning, mm -hmm. and so I miss uh, I miss that a little. Mm -hmm. The ability to extend a trip when it's going well, mm -hmm. um, or to shorten it when it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. What do you miss? Um, that we used to do before we got married. That's right. I think it is, I, my temptation is to say more spontaneity and uh, you know, I think back to when we lived in New York, that that we had more bandwidth to, in addition to traveling, going to cool dinners and, yeah. and shows, and it feels like we had more of a social life. And of course, when you add kids into the mix, along with being entrepreneurs, it feels like that is a um, that is a casualty that that we've had to sustain, and yeah. so we'll have to try to. Do more of that together. Yeah, but I, I, but you know, you you still you still do a good job in planning. Oh, so, thank you. So it helps us make a make up for some of that. All right, the next question: What is the one thing we have in common, and one thing that we are complete opposites on? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing, probably the biggest thing that we have in common, is our our delight and. Um, prioritizing being with friends and family. And what I'm one of the things that I'm really grateful for, when we decided to leave New York City and move to Colorado, we had the exact same Im ambition and priority to say, we want a, a house that has a lot of space with a lot of yard and a lot of fun stuff to do that will get everybody to our house. And and it's been really cool to see that from our, our um, uh, niece's big wedding, Indian yeah. wedding, yeah. to just having... Um, the kids here, yeah. that is, a to me, a, a value in terms of really saying we want the people here with us that we're aligned with. I would say the thing that we're opposite on, oh, gosh, uh, you like to buy everything that you see. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. You're like, no, we really need it. I'm like, maybe we need it. <laughs> true. Very true that. I mean, I, I, I would agree. I think the one thing that we have in common, I think, is our values. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and you put it in the context of friends and family, but there's so many values that we have in common, mm -hmm. which really makes living together like very... What? Like what? Love for you know, others, helping each other, mm -hmm. focusing on kids, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, um, excelling in the in the work aspects of, of our lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, absolutely. And the one thing that we have very different, mm -hmm. I, I would agree with you on the, uh, on the, the point shopping, that you made, the, the but it's time management. Uh -huh. And it, it is it is your desire to get a coffee two minutes before a flight takes off. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or, just, or just kind of, uh. or kind of leaving for the airport 15 minutes earlier then uh, uh, that that would that might make I, I've missed a lot. very few flights. I've missed which is very true. few flights. This is true also, <laughs> but but you know rather than rather than actually have a you know very um, have that buffer. Uh, yeah, uh, rather than have an actually a very hectic last fifteen minutes trying to catch a flight. You, you know, don't like running. And, you and don't I, like running through the airport. And, and, <laughs> and I used to do it differently before, but mm -hmm. you know, as as I've gotten older, I've you know I've. Um, that's something that's changed about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so my turn next. No, it's your turn. Okay. Um, what's your favorite thing to see me wear? Nothing doesn't count. No birthday suits. 
So one of the things that I really love to see you wear, you know, it looks absolutely fabulous on you, is uh, uh, some of the Indian colorful mm -hmm. dresses, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. which you only pull out now, obviously, on, on festive occasions. Mm -hmm. But I've always liked that, mm -hmm. right? And the other is, you know... Uh, and you like it, it when I do this? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when I do this and, you know, like uh, get my that, yeah. little Bollywood boogie going on. And that makes it easy. Uh -huh. uh, but the other one is just plain jeans and a white T-shirt. Oh. I think it looks fabulous. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. So what's your favorite thing to see me wear? Nothing doesn't count. Okay. You know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> white shirt. <laughs> a white, a crisp white button down. Totally. Yeah. Like every which, time. Which I came closest to running today. Okay. <laughs> you look so handsome in a crisp white shirt. Always. Thank you. Crisp white shirt. All right. Let's, let's do the next one. What's your favorite non-physical thing about yourself? Favorite non-physical thing about myself? Good Lord, who, who, who wrote these questions? <laughs> um, I want to relate it back to my, my big heart. So I'm going to say that's still physical. So um, how much I care? Okay. I think I, I care a lot. I try really hard um, for the people in my life. And it feels good to, to do that. And, and just know that that's like one of the things that I care about most and uh, yep, prioritize I, most. I would agree. What is your favorite non-physical thing about yourself? I would interpret it as, you know, maybe a interest or a hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it's music. I, I, I really love music, listening to it, playing it, getting mm -hmm. better at it. It's been one of my lifelong ambitions, mm -hmm. which I'm hoping to make mm -hmm. some progress on this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I like to buy you concert tickets for so many. Yep, uh, and, uh, so many and, and I love, love that, love mm -hmm. that, and we've gone to some fun, some really cool fun shows. concerts. Yeah. What is your favorite non-physical thing about me? I would say your honesty. Um, uh, you you like to be brutally honest in all on all on all occasions, <laughs> on all occasions, uh -huh. and that can uh, that can be discomforting sometimes. But at the end of the day, it always comes out uh, better, I think. Good, good, What's your favorite non-physical thing about me? Your, well, I was going to say your big brain, but it's big, big brain and big heart. You are one of the most, it's, it's, I know I'm, I'm totally hedging my answer here, but it really is both. Um, you are for sure one of the smartest people I know, you know, intellectually, but I also so appreciate how generous you are. And when I think about uh, during COVID, how you would stay up all night long, night after night, here living in America, and and trying to make sure that the uh, friends and family that you were close to in India, for example, got really good care. I think about your lending money to people, and you're just so, you know, just hey, how can I help? And um, how much you're willing to do for other people. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've always uh, long believed that uh, our happiness is directly proportional to the happiness of people around us. Mm -hmm. So if, if if we have a circle of friends or family that are not happy, I don't think do something yeah, that bleeds into your life. What am I most sensitive about during a fight or argument? What are you most sensitive about? I think being right. I think you're um, when it comes to a fight or an argument, um, that it feels important to you to to um, be just to be right. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> okay, good. Here, <laughs> what am I most sensitive about during a fight or an argument? <laughs> In general, for everybody, I think that uh, being right is what is a, is a common theme. But I think for you, it's also about being heard. Mm -hmm. And and so. If you, it, uh, what I've noticed is that when you feel you're being heard, mm -hmm. you are, um, you, you're, you're very easy to come around to a different point of view, mm -hmm. right? But it's very important that you get, you feel that you're heard first, mm -hmm. because uh, if you feel that you're not heard, then I think you can get stuck, or I can spontaneously combust, or, or, or <laughs> turn, in, <laughs> turn into a, a female volcano, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, for what in your life do you feel most grateful right now? I think I'm, I am the most grateful for the people I have in my life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, really, when I look around, 
and see um, what others are going through, whether mm -hmm. it's their health or health of people around them mm -hmm. or just the tension they have with their family and friends. Mm -hmm. We are very lucky that we don't have that. Mm -hmm. and, and to have friends and to have family that we have nurtured over the years, um, that they always add happiness and joy to our lives, mm -hmm. I think that's a, the, the biggest gift we could have. For what in your life are you most, uh, do you feel most grateful right now? I feel like for me, it's how much I've changed and grown. So I can appreciate you and our kids and, and my amazing team. I feel like I, I've struggled a lot. Yeah. And so I feel grateful for the grace that's been given me and just how our our marriage has improved because I think I've changed a lot. And so I feel like I'm better able um, to, you know, meet people where they are and have the kind of relationships that I've always wanted um, because I've had the, the, the courage and fortitude to do what I need to do and, you know, and to be that, um, you know, the, the mom that I want to be and the wife and friend and, and coworker. <laughs> Not good at this. How important do you think physical affection is for me? Explain. I think it's really important. I, um, what I love is how much you light up when, um, when I suggest, uh, you know, that we're having our, our, you know, special private, uh, time together. Um, and you're very, you know, anytime I want to hold your hand or, or hug you or kind of cuddle up next to you. So I feel like you're a very, um, physically affectionate person that really responds beautifully when, you know, when I, whatever overture I make, um, Unless you're super pissed, <laughs> uh, it is uh, it is it is important to you. Which is very rare. Which is very rare. How important do you think physical affection is for me? Explain. I think it's important too, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I think uh, just a hug uh, or um, you know um, a touch at the right time mm -hmm. can really help lower the stress levels. Mm -hmm. You know and um that we all have during the during the day because of work or because of various things so i i think it's important what is one thing i do that triggers or annoys you and i know there's a long um, list so just one <laughs> um but i think you know when i really think about this particular mm -hmm. question i think it comes down to something very basic for me mm -hmm. i think it's lack of communication mm -hmm. um when I, you know, uh, I, I'm, I prefer to over communicate, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, we have, we have, we have distance, mm -hmm. or we, we are doing various things, and we can't. But that's a cerebral response. Like, what do you I, mean I by lack, a, lack of communication? Like, like that's a, that's like trying to prove a negative. I talked about time management. I mm -hmm. talked about the fact mm -hmm. that you know, I, I like to plan out my day. In fact, mm -hmm. I like to think about my day the night before. Mm -hmm. Because if I plan out my day and figure out what three or four things I have to do, mm -hmm. then at that point of time, I know that I have a buffer, right? And I can accommodate, you know, surprises, mm -hmm. right? And what uh, I find difficult uh, is when I've suddenly things sp spring up in the middle that I have to do, which you are expecting me to do, or uh, something on my timetable that I wasn't kind of aware of. Mm -hmm. And that, when I say communication, it's about really those kind of things. Either either the either the unexpected things, uh, mm -hmm. not that I don't want to or can't handle them. It's just that I like to be better prepared. It's mm -hmm. just it's just the way that I am. Mm -hmm. Right. What's one thing I do that triggers or annoys you? Um. When I don't feel like you're listening to me. When I, I feel like I'm I'm really trying to make a point and I can't make my point and that's really hard. Mm -hmm. I get it. What song do you think of when you think of me? Explain why. Oh, that song by The Verve, um, a bittersweet, bittersweet Symphony, because that was when we we first got together early on in our our dating days um, when we were in um, India working together. I remember very clearly in my mind's eye, sitting there in your suite in the Oberoi and 
you know, this was the late nineties and, uh, the Verve was like the it band. And so anytime I hear bittersweet symphony, it takes me back to that, uh, really early sweet time together. What song do you think of me? <clears throat> what, what song do you think of when you think of me? It's a song that we, uh, we, uh, had at our wedding, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. by the Beatles. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's right. It's one of my favorites. What is something you do in our relationship that I don't acknowledge or value enough? That's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it maybe maybe a lot of the small things I do around the house, mm -hmm. uh, just to keep things running. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I, you and I were talking about that just a few days ago. Um, you know, I, I, I like to do things that are more, you know, um, productive, you know, things that, that have to do with my music or, mm -hmm. or, or even work or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something more cerebral, but I find, you know, myself doing a lot of things around the house here mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that I have to do to keep the, keep the place running. It's a large place. Mm -hmm. And so that's the part that I think, um, it's not that you don't acknowledge it. It's uh, it's that I don't even publicize it. Mm -hmm. but there are many things during the day that I would do, and I don't let anybody know that I'm doing it. But I mm -hmm. do it because I think they are important. Yeah. And so um, I, that possibly falls into this category. Thank you for all those little <laughs> things. And you know, I, yeah, you're right. There's, yeah. there's a lot of of administrative yeah. stuff you do that um, I really appreciate. Um, like all the crappy like insurance stuff like health insurance and car and home insurance what's something you do in our relationship that i don't acknowledge or value enough uh i think it is a a lot of little things behind the scenes that i'm good at and for our family from um organizing birthday christmas you know, presents and celebrations and, and, and you, you do, you do acknowledge it to a certain extent. So I'm not saying you don't acknowledge I'm it. I'm doing all. better at it. You now, are doing but, better at it. Yeah. But I was going to say the same thing. So, you know, yeah. And I, I, I think, yeah. you know, there's just, I, I think it is, um, it is, it's not something I mind doing, but it is time consuming all of the, particularly with the kids, with the play dates and getting to know their families and so forth. It is something that I think takes more time even than you realize. Quite no, I, mean, I, I completely yeah. agree. I, I actually, I actually value it a whole mm -hmm. bunch. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I do agree. So I don't, maybe you can I tell me a little more. Yes, I don't. <laughs> tell me you love it. I, th I, love it I think, it. I think you're, I think you're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I am really and good I, at it. I wouldn't right. be good at it. And actually, if I didn't have so much more to do, I, I would just want to even that, do more. Then you might tip us over the. I edge might tip us over the over, edge. Overcome it. <laughs> right. Very good. Very good uh, chance for that. If we weren't already in a relationship, what pickup line would you use on me? Oh, boy. Um, well, I don't use pick <laughs> I'm like, I don't use pickup lines. Um, I'm reminded when I first uh, started, when we first started dating, that I wanted to learn Hindi. And I remember specifically trying to say in Hindi, uh, can you help me find my lost socks? <laughs> And so I, I haven't changed that much. I think it would be just something corny and 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 funny, you know, because that's who I, I am. I don't think you need to use a pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> if we weren't already in a relationship, what pickup line would you use on me? I use the same one that worked last time, which is, uh, <laughs> would you, would you uh, like to uh, come and see, come and meet? The Dalai Lama with me. That was a really effective pick up line. <laughs> Thankfully, you meant it. I always say we we have we can beat anybody's first date story since that was uh, where it all started. When you asked me if I wanted to see the Dalai Lama in Delhi, Delhi in India, and I said yeah, and then uh, that was really cool. What a really wonderful way to s formally start our relationship. Yeah, that blessing worked out for yeah. us. Oh, when was the last time you cried? I've I've uh, I've cried a lot recently. Um, mm. I cried uh, literally a, a few weeks ago when 
I was actually, uh, I was going uh, towards uh, um, the Springs, the city, mm -hmm. and I went close to the hospital where my father was mm -hmm. uh, the last, uh, the last few weeks of his life. And then, uh, that made me very sad. Were you, were the kids with you or were you driving? No, I was just driving. I was just driving through the city mm -hmm. and I just uh, missed him. Mm -hmm. So that was hard. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we love him. Papa G. Papa G is with us. He is with us in spirit always. Well, you don't even need to ask me when the last time I cried was, because we all know. <laughs> <laughs> it was five seconds ago, two minutes ago, and, and just, you know, tearing up now. Yeah. Okay. Now is my turn. What is the superpower of mind that perhaps I'm unaware of? Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, yeah, that is a good question. Yeah. I don't... I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, everybody. I think you underestimate how much your praise and encouragement and, and noticing really lights people up. It's important to me. It's important to our kids. It's important to the amazing team at your tango that we work with. I think... You're parsimonious with your praise. You are a Virgo. We always, yeah, <laughs> we funny. always, and when we say we, I mean, I mean, royal we of me, uh, I'm reminded of what an ar archetypal Virgo you are, right? So you tend to be really critical. Yeah. And so when you give praise and appreciation, um, I think it means that much more to people. And I think especially coming from you, in part because you're so exacting and, um, because you're so freaking smart and have such um, high expectations of things. I think when when you notice and when you give that heartfelt appreciation, it, it means way more to people than you realize. And that's very useful. That's very useful. Okay. What is a superpower of mine that perhaps I'm unaware of? I think because you are naturally like this, I don't even think you think of it as a superpower. Mm -hmm. But the empathy that you bring into any discussion or any, I mean, no matter how busy you are, mm -hmm. right, you will take that small itsy bitsy moment mm -hmm. to express some, you know, uh, empathy with, with, with somebody who's going through a hard time. And I've seen you take the time off from a very busy day where you don't even have time to talk to me, mm -hmm. but you will take that time when it's required for something that has happened, you know, when we got some bad news about our relatives or somebody's mm -hmm. not well, uh, you really stepped up. I really, I think that's a superpower mm. to be able, able to do that. That, I appreciate that because I, uh, you know, I love to describe myself and yeah. I think of myself so much as a steamroller. And so to hear that you notice yeah. that means a lot because I, I, I feel like I try hard and I, in that, but I don't think I give myself enough credit for what I, do with that and so it helps you, to hear you, that. you actually you are absolutely right about that too mm -hmm. right you do that but then you don't give yourself enough credit mm -hmm. so yeah I always feel like you, I need you, to do you, more yeah that's right you need to do more are you satisfied with the amount of time we spend together um no I'm not uh, I wish we could spend more time together but that's one of the casualties of you know the kind of thing the kind of life we need which mm -hmm. is you know uh uh Focus on business, mm -hmm. and then of course, you know, as the kids come back, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm traveling quite mm -hmm. a bit mm -hmm. during the month, so uh, yeah, I know. I wish we could do more, more time. Okay. Are you satisfied with the amount of time? I remember that question. <laughs> yeah, no, and and that's been one of the things that I, uh, in in this latest phase of my work, as just continue to to develop myself as somebody who, not and you know this, but used to joke, ha, 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 isn't it so funny? I'm a workaholic. It's, it's freaking not funny. It's been yeah. painful. And, um, you know, I just, I feel like the weight of the, of the cost of that or the cost of that, I feel like I've only really felt in its entirety in the last few years. And so when I think about um, really wanting more time with you, as well as the kids, that's it, to me. It's not just even wanting more, but I'm I'm really trying to prioritize how can we spend more um, t 
time together and, and joyfully. Yeah. Well, we, we hope to do more this year. Um, all right. The next question. What are your biggest fears about a relationship? Uh, my biggest fears about our relationship. I used to worry that we wouldn't make it. And now I don't. So I guess I could say I don't have any big fears about a relationship anymore. Well. <laughs> How about you? I, <laughs> what are your biggest uh, fears about our relationship? I don't have fears about a relationship. Uh, I've never had. Mm -hmm. um, never had because I've been, uh, I've been comfortable that, that, that redefine. Uh, what, I, what I would like to do is to um, have more time to do the ki kind of things that we are mm -hmm. we have been wanting mm -hmm. to. We've talked about doing a lot of things over the years. Oh, so maybe your fear uh, would be that we're not going to get yeah, to do the things not, we want to do. That we're not going to get to the the okay. things that we want to do, right? And uh, and that's that's the biggest fear that I have. You know, mm -hmm. as we get as we're getting older, time yeah. is passing us by. Yeah. And we are busy at work, and that's all. That's all well and fine. But the kind of things that we wanted, like well, like one or what are one or like two of those I, things. I, I want to go to Antarctica, right? And I'm and I <laughs> and I, you know, I, I we've talked about doing that, right? Um, you know, that's just one example, mm -hmm. right? We've talked about having our, you know, um, a reunion at the um, the um, the uh, at Lake Louise. Yeah, where right? we got married. Right, and so and I look look at. Um, our calendars these days, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's just the amount of planning that we have to do, you know, mm -hmm. between your calendar, my calendar, kids' calendar, school, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we are spending a lot of time and effort to make sure that the kids mm -hmm. are, are able to mm -hmm. do what they want to do, mm -hmm. right? But that leaves mm -hmm. always very little time for the things that we had wanted those to do Those big together. trips and, yeah. So those those... <laughs> Those big trips, or the you know the time together that 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 I wanted to do and you wanted to do, we we tend to deprioritize it, yeah. and that's so it's in 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 some sense we're having fun wherever we are, but mm -hmm. you know those are some those are some things you do, and I think you ask, how can we improve our intimacy or take it to the next level? More, <laughs> more of it, and that's on me. I will, I will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's um, really being more intentional about that. I think we know it, it's important, and it's a little bit of a that we're prioritizing our work, we're prioritizing our kids, we're not prioritizing us mm -hmm. as much. Um, I think it's a cliche to say, but the best foreplay for so many women is emotional intimacy and, yeah. and feeling yeah. really appreciated and. Yeah. Um, you're great about uh, buying gifts and those kinds of things, but you know sometimes for me to just get more of the uh, appreciation and, and praise and, and planning something special yeah, for me yeah. is a good way to um, help me feel that sort of you know extra extra yeah. um, uh, more you know desire to be intimate. And I would say, uh, in response to this question, how can we improve our intimacy or take it to the next level? Is that? And by the way, our intimacy is really good. <laughs> no, it's just we need more of it. <laughs> take it to the next level. I I would say, you know, I would say, you know, in terms of that, uh, I would say, uh, don't let the small things, you know, spoil the moment. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, if the kids are misbehaving, you know, just. I think you're answering a different question. I'm, 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 asking, I'm asking this question because I think it's important. It's, it's, it's important oh my God. to, to not, to, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if the day is built on beautiful moments, right, mm -hmm. it, it just creates an amazing mm -hmm. uh, space mm -hmm. for ourselves and our, our, our mm -hmm. kids. And what spoils those moments are the things that I like to minimize in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's why I, that's why I say what can take our, our relationship to the next level mm -hmm. is basically, you know, not to sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, how well do I treat you? Explain your score. Um, I'd say probably eight and a half, and a super high score for the love language that you show is in service, right? So. 
you've stepped up and gone above and beyond and get massive points for helping me build my business and investing in the business and being very supportive of the business. And we live in, you know, this beautiful home that I just love coming home to. And so there are these, these things that you've way over delivered on. And I'm super grateful where I, the score gets reduced a little bit is, um, that especially when we have conflict that I don't feel seen and I don't feel like you listen to me and when I need you to be calm or when I, when it would be so much easier for me and in the moment when there's conflict, um, because I grew up with a lot of chaos and, and there, I didn't really mm-hmm. get when there was conflict, a, a calm response that it helps me a lot. Um, and how I feel treated when you stay calm and you listen and you really see me, that's where I think we, we have some work. On a scale of one through 10, how well do I treat you? Explain your score. I I think it's a ten. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think it's a ten because I don't I I really uh, I really think you go out of your way to to come on. There's got to be some room for improvement. Um, I, I I'm like I said I don't sweat the small stuff. Mm-hmm. What what always bothers me is that mm-hmm. when I see there's an underlying intent that's not mm-hmm. good, mm-hmm. but if I see the underlying intent is a good one. Mm-hmm. And you're, you, you're not going to take you're by, not going to take points off no, for no, poor I'm, execution. I, I'm, <laughs> no, but and I really uh, I don't I don't I don't think that is I don't think that's the way I, that I'm configured. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. What is my most physically attractive feature? Your smile. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. What is my most physically attractive feature? Your whole face. <laughs> Your whole <laughs> handsome, sexy face. Very good, very good. Next question. When was the last time I hurt you even unintentionally? Oh, uh, <laughs> I think you know this. Uh, last week, when the kids, when our 11-year-old was being really disrespectful to me and I was trying to explain to you what was happening. And you kept telling me that you knew, and I felt like you weren't listening. And that was really, like I felt really, really badly because it just, it felt like if you would just be quiet and listen, even if you felt like you already knew. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really felt like I needed to say what was going on so that we could be on the same page and and together provide a solution. And so it was really hard when I felt like you weren't listening to me. I'm sorry about that. Um, um, Thank you. Um, when was the last time I hurt you, even unintentionally? The, the, when, when, when you're trying to discipline the kids or trying to get them to, mm-hmm. get them mm-hmm. to behave, um, I feel that we could do it a slightly different way. So I think our approaches are a little bit different there. My approach is to give them a little bit more grace mm-hmm. and uh, and say this thing this thing will get fixed, mm-hmm. but it'll take a little bit more time. Are you dodging the question? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not do- dodging the question because, because I, that didn't answer because, when last time I hurt you, even unintentionally. Because my, I, think the point I, I think I think we're going into a little discomfort. No, for you. no, no, no. The point that I was trying to make was that that's what I feel bad about, mm-hmm. right? That That's what I feel hurt about, mm-hmm. is that that uh, the discussions that we've had about, you know, approaching these kids differently, we aren't able to put it in practice. Mm-hmm. I feel we could be doing better on. Just a little bit more, you know, uh, maybe grace or giving them some time to, to adjust. And they, they are adjusting fine, I think. Well, not, not as we'll, fast we'll as you let, Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just keep going. <laughs> What is the one thing you do better than me as a parent and vice versa? So what thing do you do better than me and what thing do I do better than you? Maybe the one thing that I do better than you is just just maybe because of my upbringing, I tend to focus a lot more of my time with them on their academic. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Um, Whereas you take care of their their social and Mm -hmm. their, their sports. So I think it's a great Mm-hmm. balance frankly mm-hmm. but I definitely 
don't do as well as you when I think about all the social engagements, you know, making mm -hmm. sure they're getting time with their friends, throwing parties and that kind of stuff. What's the one thing you do better than me as a parent and vice versa? The one thing I do better than you as a parent, I have, I think I can say decisively, I have way more fun with the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'd like you to have more fun with them too, whether it's skiing or just roughhousing with them or goofing off. Uh, I feel like I prioritize that. I try to just be goofy and fun with them every single day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I think what you do better than me, in addition to the homework, you tend to care a lot about um, things like nutritional supplements. And if, uh, for example, if, if Alex has a sore throat, you're getting him to do the gargling that kind of stuff, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it's midnight and Alex needs to gargle. Go to dad. <laughs> what are your goals for our relationship? I want us, and I've, I've told you this, I, you know, we've, I've even said how I felt like our first marriage wasn't successful to have a, a second marriage where we thrive and where we're just, where we're so... Um, aligned and harmonious and have fun with each other and and travel and do all the cool things we want to do but i i have very high expectations of us and so that's you know i'd like us just to to really have each other's backs and be grateful and and harmonious and always prioritize that what are your goals for our relationship i always look at what we have mm -hmm. getting better mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily have any concrete goalposts in that mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. right? From from my perspective, uh, if we uh, love each other, care for each other, having fun together, mm -hmm. you know, making sure we're having fun mm -hmm. uh, includes the kids, mm -hmm. then I'm happy. And so, um, so how can we have first? more? Okay. How can yeah. we have more of the same? And not drive and, the marriage into the ditch. <laughs> and, 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 and presumably you're not driving it into the ditch because you're having, you're having fun, right? Uh, yeah. But if you're having fun, then ask yourself, how can we have even more? Even more. More. Even more. more. Even more. Okay. The next question. Oh, uh, what's the sexiest thing I do without realizing it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You've got a lot of sexy things. I even, I even text you. Hi, sexy. A lot of X's. Uh... Being ultra calm and ultra cool when things are, when other people are getting rattled or when things are stressful for you to, when you stay really calm and, um, and open and curious, that's, that is, that is like the best. It's like, okay, that's my man. That's my man. What is the sexiest thing I do without realizing it? Well, I, for me, it is all, always the really small things that you do. You seem you you remember something that that I have on my plate mm -hmm. that even I have forgotten, mm -hmm. right? And that's sexy. And I <laughs> I think that's that's amazing because it's really it's it really tells me that you're always thinking about you know what I have mm -hmm. uh, I have to do, or you'll make me a, a cup of tea and bring it in, mm -hmm. or something small, right? Mm -hmm. I really love that about you. Mm -hmm. Because it says, I love you in my actions. Yeah. That's what it is. Good. Because love is an action word. Okay. All right. <laughs> which, which part of my heart do you wish you could heal? That's an easy one, actually. Oh. Uh, that's, a, that's an easy one. Um, there's a lot to do with your childhood. Mm -hmm. That, you know, experiences that you went through mm -hmm. where you felt that people around you weren't, you know, paying attention to you, to your needs, mm -hmm. neglecting you. Mm -hmm. Um, because you obviously had things that you wanted to 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 receive mm -hmm. and you didn't, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a that's a big part of you that you always now you want for your own children, mm -hmm. you want for me for us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the part I wish I could heal that because um, I I was lucky to have a very different experience mm -hmm. growing up. So you know I don't have the same hole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, once I've realized mm -hmm. that that there is a there is something to be done there, uh -huh. I wish I could heal that part of your heart. Well, thank you. And so there's a part that I could wish I could <laughs> just, you know, 
change that, that would be it. Well, our marriage is, has done a lot to help that, so thank you. Which part of my heart do you wish you could heal? The part that misses your dad. Yeah. And other people. You know, I feel like uh, your family has gone through a fair amount of loss, and when I think about just um, your, and even for some of your relatives that are still with us but have pretty serious conditions, yeah, I think that part of that weighs on you a lot. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. It's hard to hard to think of it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, next question. What ways can I improve as a husband or husband slash wife as a husband? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd be great if I could use a wife. <laughs> if you want to, I want to. I think that I, th- I think you. That there may be some truth to that. <laughs> that you actually want a wife. Uh, no, I want you. Um, what I would say, what I would love more. <laughs> from you um, when things get stressful for you to stay calm when I'm starting to get stressed um, that would be a great gift and to listen when I'm hurting or when I am in doubt or dysregulated just just to be able to listen and hear me and, and see me a little bit more would feel really good okay what ways? What ways can I improve? Okay, right. So you, I, I took it from you. That's I'm like totally confused. This is a simple one. Okay. Spend less time at work. Okay. That's it. Because uh, to your point, I understand how important your work is to mm-hmm. you, um, mm-hmm. and and you you labored at it a lot like, for, for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always like to think of it as a marathon. Mm-hmm. So uh, don't get tired. Mm-hmm. It's a marathon. Mm-hmm. You still have a lot of work to do tomorrow and the day after yeah. and the week after. So you just need to uh, slow down a little bit. All right. I will try. Oh, my gosh. Look into each other's eyes for 30 seconds without looking away or saying a word. When you're done, take turns saying the first thing that comes to your mind straight from your heart. Okay. I was looking into your eyes, I was just struck by the fact that I'm really lucky to have you in my life. I love you. So I felt that I felt like, you know, for the setbacks that we've had and the doubt that we've had, you know, that you've been in front of me all along. Same here. Hallelujah. What answer of mine surprised you most today? And which one will you still be thinking about long after this is over? Oh, dang. Can I ask that one first? Sure. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, when I asked you what a superpower of mine is that I'm not aware of, uh, that you said empathy and that I I do so much to take care of people around me and just I think between your um notice and, and then that that I I also don't give myself credit so I feel like that that whole thing makes me feel really seen and appreciated but but I think the point I was trying to make also was that people around you notice yeah well so, that you notice so, yeah so I and that. and and you are discounting it mm-hmm. but other people notice okay what answer of mine surprised you most today? Nothing you said surprised me today. <laughs> and, and I take it as a good thing because mm-hmm. that means we are communicating mm-hmm. and that, you know, I already know you so well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I, I think uh, um, the good news is that because your answers didn't surprise me, I think you know me well too. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good thing. Um, would you want to do or be open to do the um, that Hawaiian uh, forgiveness um, prayer, the ho ho uh, pono pono? Sure. Um, just because it is Valentine's, and it just feels like this is something that when we went to the Tony Robbins event a few weeks ago, I just love doing this with you. And I think um, for people, especially people watching, but if even if you're just listening, to listen to the words. 
and to know that we can give each other this this grace and how powerful it is. So um, um, we'll just maybe I'll say it a, a few times to you and you can say it to me. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. All right. This is a wrap. Sanjay, thank you. This was um, an outstanding, very different kind of open relationships episode. But I, I do want to, in, in all sincerity, really thank you for um, building this incredible marriage with me and helping me build my business and and do the show and all the things um, that we're doing together. So, and right. and built and raising such great kids and, and all the all the great things we get to do together and with the people we love in our lives. And in some sense, I always feel you don't have to thank me because we're doing it for ourselves. That's yeah. oh, that's <laughs> oh, zing! <laughs> that's a good one. All right, all right. Well, hang on, I'm, I'm ra- you have oh, to. <laughs> He, it's okay, folks. He's not been. He has not been on the guest on the show before. For anybody who was uh, listening and not watching, Sanjay was trying to get up and walk away. <laughs> not yet. Hold him, Tiger. Uh, okay, this is a wrap. Um, it was just such a gift to to do this show. I want to thank uh, a couple of my team members, Sabrina James and Lily uh, Costner, for coming up with the questions and and all the people that. Uh, bring you open relationships transforming together. The questions are available on the um, uh, show page. Just click that link and I really encourage you to do some version of this with somebody you love. And that's it. I hope you have a very, very sweet, loving, wonderful Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone.